there are three amazing new features coming to the latest update for Lychee Slicer that are going to completely change how you prepare your files for resin 3D printing. And I am so excited about them because they're features not available on any other slicer and it's going to make your life so much easier when it comes to actually hollowing and supporting your files before 3D printing. And as I mentioned, these are new features coming to the next version of the software, which I don't have an exact release date for, but I believe it might be releasing next week, which is very very exciting. Uh, if you're interested in testing out these new features for yourself, you can hop on over to the Lychee Discord channel and download a copy of the beta for yourself and test these out. But keep in mind that these new features are going to be limited to the pro and premium versions of the Lychee Slicer. So I've got the beta version of Lychee Slicer up and running on my computer. And for this first new feature, I'm gonna be working with Wexter's Hellboy Bust. And one of the things that I love about Lychee Slicer is any file that shows up as red means there's a potential issue with it and there's a, rep a repair tool built directly into this. Now this isn't the new feature, this has been here for quite some time now. So it looked like there was one small hole that it needed to repair before we can go off and proceed with this next test. So one of the very first things that you typically do uh, when coming in and prepping your files for 3D printing is just rotating them here on the build plate before you run off and do things like hollowing and supporting. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in this first new feature, which is taking a look at their new suction detection feature. So as you're going through and hollowing out your prints, so here I'm gonna come into prepare, come under hollow, and I'm gonna update the files so that they're actually hollow. Now, once this is done, we can adjust the slider and see that our prints have actually been hollowed. And this is where some folks can actually run into some mistakes. Before they uh, run off in 3D printing thing, they might go off and support it and just try printing without adding any holes. And you run up into those issues with suction. So they've added in a suction cup detector in here. So here I can click on the search selected function and it's gonna help detect if there's any suction areas in our prints. So here highlighted in green are all of those areas that are gonna be of a concern that we're gonna be dealing with some suction issues when trying to print this. And the obvious way to alleviate this is to add some holes to our print. So here I'm gonna come in and add a hole here to uh, the center of the base file and I'm gonna add some to the backside of Hellboy himself and then maybe one on the inside here. And then I'm gonna run this uh, suction cup detection again, and this is where things get really cool, is even when you've added holes to your prints, it's gonna help check to see if there are any other areas that you need to be concerned about that will potentially cause you issues when 3D printing. So here, specifically for the base, I should probably look at adding another hole closer to the back of the print. Uh, there's some small areas here on Hellboy. I could potentially look at adding one as well further back to alleviate that small area. And then there's some smaller areas along the neck that I'm really uh, honestly not too concerned about. So let's run that search again. And it should have cleaned this up a good bit more. I think this is a really amazing new feature that's gonna especially help new people that aren't familiar with resin 3D printing and all the different intricate processes that are involved with it, especially when it comes to properly hollowing your prints before 3D printing them and making sure that the holes are in the right placement. So for this next feature, I'm gonna be working with one of Loot Studio's miniatures. And what I wanna do is cut off the front half of the sword just to make it a little bit easier on myself when it comes to actually prepping this file for printing. This is again, just an example. Their files already come pre-supported so you don't really have to worry about this, but it's a great example to show you how cool this new cutting tool is. So I'm gonna select my file and I'm gonna come under tools and under the tools menu is a planar cut function. So what's so amazing about this new tool is I can come in and orient this tool how I'd like to orient it for actually cutting my file, my object here. So here I've got, I don't know, the let's adjust this just a little bit so it's at a little bit more of an angle with that sword. And let's line it up about there. But what we're gonna end up seeing happen is it's not only gonna cut off the sword, but it's gonna cut into the body of our figure. And we don't want that. I only wanna cut the sword. But what's cool is I can select this function on the right hand side called select cutouts. And I can say, nope, don't cut that. Don't cut the shoulder piece. Don't cut the hip. Don't cut this leg or this part or this part or the toe. I only wanna cut, oops, here's another part that I missed. But I only wanna cut 
this sword right here. And now I can say apply and it's gonna completely separate the sword from the rest of the body. So here we've now completely separated the sword from the rest of the figure without slicing into the other object there. This is a complete game changer. This isn't available on any slicer. You can't do this in Mesh Mixer. The only tools that I'm available to do something like this in is in something like ZBrush or Nomad Sculpt, and that still requires you to go in, mask off areas, and then perform a cut, and then maybe it doesn't quite work the way that you want it to. This is so simple and amazing. And the other really cool thing is if you have a pre-supported lychee file, you can still perform this function and still retain the supports that have been previously added to the file. So this last feature might be my absolute favorite and it's a new way for you to support your files. And for this, I'm gonna be working with a face mask here that was from the House of Dragon that was created by Sarah Deer Cosplay. And what I'm gonna do first here is like I normally do, I've got this oriented here. It's gonna be printing on the Elegoo Mars 3. So it's a, it's a small printer, but I'm still able to fit a good amount on the build volume of that machine here. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna auto support this like I normally would. I typically just like to run auto supports and run off and print. However, there are a good number of instances where I'd like some additional supports added to my files. Like if I look at this mask here along the bottom, I'd like some more supports along this section or maybe supporting up the side of the mask. So what we now have is a new easy way to add additional manual supports. So if I come into the manual section here, there is at the bottom an inline support option. So this is enabled, I can set my intervals and this is gonna provide me with the ability if I click on one section here and then hold down shift, it's gonna auto generate a whole series of supports for me to help further support an area that I'm trying to print. This is just a really easy way to add a whole bunch of additional supports in sections that you need them. And especially here, like along this backside of the mask, I can click on this one point and then add a whole series of supports up the side of the mask to help further support it as it's printing up on our machine. This is really great for anybody that's manually prepping their files, especially when it comes to things like 3D printing dice, which is an example that Lychee gave on their site. However, for me, printing cosplay items like this and being more easily able to add a whole bunch of sections of supports in one specific area is gonna be a huge game changer for me. Also, one last bonus thing that they've added in is the ability for you to manage multiple support profiles, which I haven't gone through and set up just yet. But if I had to have a set of support settings for miniatures versus cosplay versus statues or something like that, I'd be able to set that up based on the printer that I'm working with. And there was no way I wasn't gonna run off and 3D print the files that we were prepping in today's video, which is where I wanna say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Elegoo, the makers of the Elegoo Saturn II, which is an amazing mid-size 8K resin 3D printer that's gonna allow you to print some really beautifully detailed prints along with the Elegoo Mars 3, which might be my favorite resin 3D printer. And as you can see, it still allows you to print some fairly large things extremely quickly. If you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's products, you'll be able to find links to those down below. A huge thank you again to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. And here's a look at our 3D prints and everything printed as expected. And I'm really happy with the results of the Hellboy bust. By the way, uh, Wexter already has a pre-supported set of files, so you don't have to worry about hollowing and supporting those. Again, just using this as an example of how you could go about using that new suction cup functionality there to detect if you have any issues or potential issues with your file before printing it. And then we also had the planar cut file from Loot Studios, again, which was pre-supported originally, but I went off and printed it anyways. But before I printed it, I ended up slicing off the front of the sword, showing you how you could actually slice off that sword without interacting with the other parts of the file. Right there, that is such an amazing feature for Lychee to have that literally no other slicer has. Again, Mesh Mixer, you can't do that. Anytime that you wanna go and slice through a file, you're gonna be completely cutting through all of the parts and there's no way to segment off little section by sections. And then here's our Game of Thrones mask that we use those new inline support feature to add more supports very quickly and easily to other areas of this mask. Again, this is such an amazing add-on feature, especially if you're looking at printing things that have diagonal edges there, or if you're just wanting to better support things like mesh, 
masks or helmets, this is a really quick and easy way to go about doing that. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I'm in the process of converting all of my Cheetu Box resin 3D printer profiles over to Lychee because that's the slicer that I'm gonna be using pretty much moving forward thanks to some of these features that I've shown you here in today's video. And let me know what your thoughts are on the latest updates that are coming to Lychee Slicer. The ability to use that planar cut tool and not have to slice through every part of your file is amazing, absolutely wild. And those inline supports, easily my favorite thing that's coming to the Slicer update. Hey, and thanks again for watching all. I'll see you next time. Bye now.